Good morning, everyone. Boy, it is great to be back in sunny Indiana. We just love it here. Now, if we can just get somebody to control the thermostat a little bit, we'll be all right. Hey, a couple of things that I noticed in the bulletin. I think what happened is the same thing that happens to me when I'm typing. Every now and then, a sentence or a phrase just goes poof, and you wonder where it went. Well, take a look in your bulletin, and it says scripture reading, and it's blank. It'll be Ephesians 5, 3 to 7. And right below that is the prayer hymn, This Is My Father's World. That's number 46. Okay, So it's just somebody typing along and a phrase disappeared on them. Sorry about that. As far as announcements to be made, uh, we've had to postpone the annual church meeting because of some illnesses. Uh, You notice Mike and Kathy aren't here. Um, Charity Circle will not be meeting this Tuesday. Uh, It's safer to wait until March 1st to meet. The Wednesday Bible study, we're ready to start Romans 16. We're just showing up at 7. We're still not doing any of the treats or shared meals. We need to let things calm down even more yet. Um, Yeah, the new COVID cases. I understand they're starting to fall, and I look, as funny as this sounds, thank God so many of the symptoms are lighter um, it's, it's much more virulent, it, it's much more infectious, but at least in most cases, the, the symptoms are much lighter. Uh, Can you speak to that, sir? Sure. <clears throat> I'm sure most of you have heard by now, but um, the reason I've not touched any of you this morning uh, is the fact that Margaret did test positive this week and uh, we have isolated ourselves. Um, We've split bathrooms and and bedrooms, the whole bit, and and, uh, um, I have tested negative twice. I know I am negative. Um, I'm I'm not not carrying anything, but I still, as much as I wanted to hug you and touch you and shake hands with you, I haven't done that this morning. I want to piggyback on what he said, because obviously Margaret's had both shots and her booster. And when she tested positive, it's just been a soreness in her shoulders and, and some congestion. And it really hasn't been as bad as the flu. So I just, just want to let you know that <clears throat> she did the typing and not feeling well. So <laughs> any errors, you know why. But uh, just, just keep praying for each other. Uh, understand that uh, why. I've stayed away from you today. I I know I'm fine, but I just don't want anyone to think that I could possibly carry anything. So, love you much. You know, I love you guys enough that I'll endure his hugs. If you want to hug him, hug me, and I'll pass it on to him later. Okay, I could stand it. It's good. All right, weather delays, you know that we put them out on the TV stations. We've also got that call uh, system. So if you get a call from kind of a strange number on a Sunday morning and it's snowing, you might pick it up and listen to it. It'll probably be a recording. And I, I want to say it just from the bottom of my heart. You guys let us go for two weeks so that we could meet, fellowship, discuss a lot of in-depth things. Thank you. We uh, thank you very much. You let both Larry and I go for two weeks. That was very, very kind of you, and it means a lot to both families. Okay. Any other announcements that I might have missed? Yep. If you want a hard copy, newsletters at each door. Anything else? Yes, sir. Not only is it delivered quicker, it saves us the postage. And we try to spend the money like it's our own because we know it's yours. And we want to spend just as little of it as we can on administrative things. That lets us send so much more of it out to do God's work outside of here. Okay. 
Any others? Then I'll ask for birthdays. What do we have as far as birthdays? All right. What about anniversaries? Any anniversaries this week? Would you stand up and let us sing to you? If you have hearing aids, we're going to have a trumpet playing during the prelude today. I want you to be aware of that, because it, to my knowledge, we'll, she'll play the best she can, but you can't, there's no volume control on a trumpet. <laughs> okay? So be ready. As far as prayer requests, I know, I say it most of the time, they're all important, and we know they work. We've even looked at the scientific facts that they work. Okay, we've experienced it. We count them all the time. They work. This is a great tool for you to use all week long. Okay? Those people who have COVID, Margaret, Mike, I know there's more. Uh, the cruisers, Lana has COVID. Uh, the cruisers, David broke his leg and he's still laid up. There's just, we've got people in hospice, the Seabach family. There are so many of these things that I could mention. Judy Vincent, her family. Just, if you would please, use the prayer request list. It is important. And would you please join me in a moment of silent prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to introduce Sarah. She is a student at Hamilton Southeastern High School. I first met Sarah when she was five. She started taking piano lessons, and we had good days, and we had days where we didn't want to play, didn't we? <laughs> But um, she stopped taking a couple years ago when she took up the brass instrument, but she plays beautifully. Yesterday we played at, um, a contest and she got a gold medal, so in four weeks she'll be going to state, so wish her luck. She's playing a Dante a Scherzo by Barat.
Good morning. Good morning. And thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. For our praise hymn, please turn to page 569, The Joy of the Lord. Let's stand as we sing that all the way through. Page 569. Mm -hmm. reading for today comes from the fifth chapter of Ephesians, verses 3 through 7. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> For our prayer hymn, please turn to page 46. This is my father's home. We'll sing all three verses standing on the third, page 46. <laughs>
Lord, thank you for the opportunity to gather here, to open our hearts to your word, to your will. Help us to see you in that blend, uh, gentle blowing grass. Help us hear your word clearly and concisely. Help us understand your directions for us. Let us hear the commercials that you send us in all the little things that happen to us throughout the week. We love you so much. We've seen so many marvelous things done by you. We stand here in faith, doing our best to be obedient. We just ask your continued guidance and direction. In Christ's name, amen. For a communion hymn, please turn to page 234, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. We're going to sing all four verses standing on the fourth, page 234.
so freely shed for our sins. And through that sacrifice, that we may again spend eternity with you. We ask all this in your son's name. As we continue in our prayer, Father, we thank you so much. You loved us to that immeasurable amount, the amount of love required to send your one and only son to die on the cross for us, knowing that he would be beaten, that he would be humiliated, that he would be hung on a cross to die such a terrible death. We remember, we hold that in our hearts. We carry that amount of, that knowledge of that amount of love forward with us everywhere we go. We ask you to help us to share that with others. We ask your blessing on this loaf that represents that perfect sacrifice, that body that took that beating. Might you bless this to us, to your will, to your way of doing things that we can share it. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please join me in a prayer for the offering. Father, we give you thanks for all the many things you have done for us. So many things that we just can't even begin to count them. You are our loving, gracious Lord, and we just thank you that you care for us. And now we ask a blessing upon the offering. Help us in the use of this money that we may further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. There were many lessons in the scripture that Brent read in your hearing this morning. But there's one particular one that I want us to concentrate on this morning. And that is, let no one deceive you with empty words. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Now, I don't know about the rest of you. But every time it seems like lately that I watch a commercial, I turn around to Margaret and say, what were they selling? What, what do they want? What do they mean? Maybe I'm the only one, but I get, I mean, it, it's a little bit. You know. So what I want to do today is something I think should be a little bit fun for us. I want to go back and I want to remember commercials that had a meaning, commercials that had value. And I want to look at them from two perspectives. Some of these commercials, I think, absolutely tell us the Christian way of life. And others tell us the worldly way of life. And I want to see if we can kind of look at them and, and pick up on them and maybe help us remember some of the things as we walk out today. The first one I want to look at is Holiday Inn. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. I love that commercial. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. I was reading an article that said 
that people who walk into a new building, a new church, will make a decision in five minutes whether they like that church or not. Five minutes. We have five minutes. Now, all of us know that this building was jam-packed before the pandemic. And now we look around and we're going to have to rebuild. We understand that. When we're going to rebuild, we're going to fill this building again, as well as those who watch us online. We have been and are a loving congregation. It broke my heart today not to hug you and to welcome you like I normally do. But we have to understand, we only have five minutes from the time people walk in to make that first impression. We never get a second chance to make that first impression. Romans 15, 7. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Welcome people when they come in here just as Christ has welcomed you into the family. And isn't that exciting? Weren't you excited the moment that Christ welcomed you into the family, however that took place, whenever that took place? That's the way we have to greet everyone. And not just as they come in this building, but greet them in our lives. We only get about five minutes to make an impression on a new person as to whether or not we are going to be a Christian example, a Christian ambassador for Christ. That's how much time we have, five minutes to make a first impression. Scripture says, greet one another with a holy kiss. All brothers send you greetings. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek it to show hospitality. You only get five minutes. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. I could give you a hundred stories about first impressions. I'm only going to give you a couple. One of them, that back door right there. I remember as surely as I was standing there the day that Jean and Carl Cummins walked through that door. I remember exactly what she said to me. She said, where do you have your guitars? And I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, we don't have any guitars. She said, where do you hide your drums? And I said, we don't have any drums. And she said, okay, we'll stay. You see, sometimes it's what you don't have that impresses people. Now, sometimes it's what you do have that discourages people. For 23 years, I was the minister of the Cumberland Pike Church of Christ. Now, that congregation was a splinter group off of this congregation. They could have named themselves the Cumberland Road Christian Church, but they decided Church of Christ is in the Bible, and Christian Church isn't. So they took a biblical name, Cumberland Pike Church of Christ. Now, there's also a Church of Christ, non-instrumental. And I remember one day, I'm standing there at the door, and the entranceway was there, and then you came over and turned and went down. So I greeted them, and they were excited, and I was excited, and a new couple coming in. They turned around, started down there. They saw the piano and the organ. They turned right around and said, we're out of here. They were non-instrumental people. And they believed that piano and that organ was, was wrong. You see, sometimes it's what you do have that's going to turn people off. So what we have to understand is simple. When we are dealing with others throughout the world, and we want to be ambassadors for Christ, we have to understand that what we have and what we don't have may be a hindrance in our relationship. What we have is Jesus Christ. Now, that should be enough to enhance us. What we don't have is the world, and that's going to discourage some people. But what we have to remember is you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Secondly, like a good neighbor, State Farm is here. You've heard it many, many times. Well, like a good neighbor, Cynthia Ann is here. And like a good neighbor, each one of you are here. And like a good neighbor, everybody that's watching us online is here. You see, like a good neighbor, we can make a difference in the world. Hebrews 12, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13, too. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, 
and thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Do not neglect. Be a good neighbor. 1 Corinthians 12.12, 12, just, just as the body is one and has many members, all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so it is with Christ. So it is with Christ. Sometimes we look at people and they look different from us. They look a little strange to us. They don't exactly look the way we want them to look. We've gone through all kinds of hairdressings, tattooings, all kinds of body changes. All of these things are people in the world. We have to understand people are people. And we have to be hospitable. Like a good neighbor, we have to be there for everyone, for everyone. Most of you know that Margaret and I lived in our dream home for 31 years. I designed the house. I cut the timber down off the land ourselves. We had it milled and used much of the timber that I cut down in the building of the house. I designed it. It was wonderful. We loved it. And we decided at some point in time, that point in time was being 83 years old, we need to move into a smaller house. And so we moved. And what did I find? I found Stan. And Stan is the greatest neighbor I've ever had in my entire life. Stan is wonderful. Stan is there for you no matter what. I'm, I'm gone, Stan, <laughs> he, he's so wonderful. He cleaned my sidewalk, and he shoveled my driveway, and, and all those things that, you know, he didn't have to do. Stan is always there for anything. He's always saying, now, you know, Larry, I know that you gave away most of your tools. I've got anything you want. Come borrow it. I mean, he's, he's there to pick up our paper and put it on the porch. He, he, just, he just is wonderful. And all my fears of moving dissipated because of Stan. Like a good neighbor. Stan is there. Like I said before, like a good neighbor, Cynthia Ann is here. We are a good neighbor, and we're going to be even a better neighbor. Yeah, I, I read this book for school. It was called From Good to Great. And I'm, you know, I'm, we are good at so many things, but we can be great at those same things. Just because we're good at them doesn't mean we stop here. We try to find ways that we can be even better like a good neighbor, we're going to be there. And the interesting thing is, we're going to be there whether it's in the Philippines or whether it's in India or whether it's in Africa or whether it's in Jamaica or whether it's in Anderson or India. We're going to be a good neighbor because that's who we are and that's what we're all about. And as we grow in Christ, we want to ask a question. Where's the beef? Good question, isn't it? Where's the beef? Acts 2.42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. In Hebrews 10.25, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some is, but encouraging one another all the more as the day draws near. In Acts 2.41, so these who received the word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Where's the beef? Right here. This is the beef. The apostle Paul said, when you are young, you are nurtured with milk. But he said, at some point in time, your physical body requires you to go from milk to the meat. Now, he said the same thing's true spiritually. When you are young in the spirit, you are on milk, and we feed them on milk, and we keep, you know, but sometime or another, you got to ask, where is the meat? And the meat's right here, and the meat is every Sunday morning, night, 7 o'clock, we talk about the meat. From me, all you're getting is milk. All I can give you is a little bit in the 20, 25, 20, more than the 12 minutes that Mike gave you two weeks ago. That's all I can give you, though, is the milk. 
But the study of the word is the meat. You know, the question is, and you know, and the only one's got it. We have the meat right here. And we want to share that meat. And it's important that we share that meat. Unfortunately, we live in a drive-through society. And it's been even true more than the pandemic. Even Larry has gone through a drive-through. Before the pandemic, I swore I would never go through a drive-through in my life. And when the buildings close and the only way you can get a McDonald's is to go through the drive-through or an Arby's or whatever, I've done it. I'm ashamed, but I've done it. But a relationship with God cannot be like a drive through It's got to be meaningful. It's got to be ongoing. And we have an opportunity. Now, if there's no way you can come to a Bible study, then make your own personal Bible study. But make sure this is the meat. And you need to be on it. You can't live on milk. You've got to have the meat. Yeah, we've got it, and we need to share it. You know, the world, and I said this is going to be kind of a, comprom- not a, com- a comparison between Christianity and the world. The world has some commercials that they like, too. One of the Burger King commercials is the world, have it your way. Remember that commercial, have it your way. Well, that's what the world wants. The world wants it my way. I don't want your way. I don't want his way. I want my way. The world also loves Nike. Just do it. Now, just do it means, and and Brett talks about this all the time, just do it means follow your feelings. Don't don't think, don't pray, don't, don't look to God, don't do anything. Just follow your feelings. That's just do it. And that's what the Nike commercial says. Just just do it. Or how about the Outback commercial? No rules, just right. If I had no rules, it'd be just wrong. Because if I made up the rules, it would probably be all around me and not about you. So the world is looking at these commercials, and the world is living those commercials about, I want it my way, and... Just do it, and no rules, just right. That represents the attitude of many people living in the world. But the scripture says, not neglecting to meet together is the habit of some is. We need to understand how important it is to meet together. And after this pandemic starts to wind down, and I really believe it's going to do that, As the pandemic starts to wind down, we've got to help and encourage people to have the courage and the faith to start coming back together. It's important. You know, I I can do my Bible study at home. I could study my Bible seven days a week by myself and not get as much out of it as I do one hour on a Wednesday night because I can only see things from my perspective. But on Wednesday night or Sunday morning, I see things from other people's perspective. And it helps me understand the scripture far better. But we have some Christians who have a commercial, they like it. Brill cream, just a little dab will do you. Now think about it, think about it. Think about some of the people you know who call themselves Christians and they're Brill Cream Christians. Just a little dab will do you. I was baptized and I go to church on Christmas and I go on Easter. Yes, sir. You know, I'm a Christian. Just that little dab will do me fine. Unfortunately, (laughs) one of the One of the saddest verses in the Bible, I think, is Demas has left me for this present world. The Apostle Paul had a man named Demas, and apparently he was a good man and a good worker for Christ, and for whatever reason, he got trapped by the world, and so he went back to where he was. And how sad it must have been for Paul to have written, Demas has departed. He's left me for the present world. Or how about Simon the sorcerer, who apparently was a good man in Christ, but he saw how miraculously the power was of God in the healing of Peter and 
and John and how they would heal people, and he offered to buy it because he wanted to use it for his own glory? Just a little dab will do you? You know, how sad. You know, sometimes I, I, people will have a Bible displayed on their, in their living room, on, you know, and it's there. It's just decorative. It's just like a picture on the wall. A little dab will do you. See, sometimes we feel that this world, there's a lack of commitment, and I don't know why. The number of young people who live together rather than getting married is getting just stronger and stronger and higher and higher, and I don't know why. I don't know why we're afraid to make a commitment. But when we're afraid to make a commitment in marriage, physically, we also seem to be afraid to make a commitment with a marriage spiritually. And that's the world in which we live. And that's the world in which we have to change. You know, problems. Boy, you know, anybody in this room not have a problem? Anybody out there not have problems? Well, how about pop, pop, fizz, fizz? Oh, what a relief it is. Alka-Seltzer. Well, you know, if you could just take an Alka-Seltzer and get relief from the stomach, how wonderful it is to be able to take a little bit of Bible and get relief from your spiritual problems. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. All these things that divide us in the world, all these problems we have that are dividing us. And problems do divide. They just do. I don't care whether it's between you and your spouse, whether you and your children or you and your parents, you and your neighbors, you and your workplace. Problems divide. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a spiritual Alka-Seltzer? You could just pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief. It is. Wouldn't that be great? Or how about this one? Call Roto-Rooter, that's the name, and away your troubles go down the drain. See, after pop, pop, fizz, fizz, we want to get rid of these things. Well, let's get them down the drain. John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Call Rotor Rooter, and your troubles will go right down the drain. Our Rotor Rooter is the Holy Spirit of God. Call upon him, use him, and let him sweep those troubles right down the drain. And we know life is full of trouble. And I've, I've heard people say so many times, if I just had enough money, oh, if I just had enough money, I wouldn't have a problem in the world. And you know, I was thinking the other day about Rose Kennedy. And I start to think to myself, you know, here she is, one of the wealthiest women in America, right? She had money, lost her son Joseph in World War II. Her son Jack was assassinated. Her son Bobby was assassinated. Her grandson died in a plane crash and rumors and problems in the family throughout. What did all that money do for her? How many of you would trade your position for Rose Kennedy's? I wouldn't for a minute. I don't know how you deal with losing all of those family members. All your money, and it wouldn't do you a bit of good. Not one bit. Or how about this one, one of my favorites, double your pleasure and double your fun with double mint, double mint, double mint gum. I love that one. Ephesians 1.22, and he put all things under his feet and he gave him as the head of all things to be the church. Jesus Christ, he put him as the head he put Jesus at the head. He put Holy Spirit at the side, and that's double your, double, double, double your fun, double your, 
Yeah, double your pleasure. That would do it. It does it every time. Too many of us think only of the here and now. But when you double your pleasure and double your fun, you think of both the here and now and the then and there. And they both can be good. Because to me, the then and there starts at the here and now. And that's why I say double your pleasure, double your fun. And then, of course, for my last commercial, I've asked Tina to share with us. Of course, the commercial, you're, you're going to have to use your imaginations. It was done by a five or six year old. <laughs> oh, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. That is what I'd truly like to be. Because if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, Everyone would be in love with me. <laughs> Colossians 3, 14 through 16. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Now, I don't know if that was exactly a spiritual song, <laughs> but it had a message, right? It had a message. And the message is simply, what do I need to do to have people fall in love with me? And the answer is real simple. Let the love of Christ be shining from without. From within to without. Let the love of Christ be there. That's the way you get people to really care about you. Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener myself. Because I would surely love to have people be in love with the Christ that lives within me. The Apostle John put it so simply. He just simply said, little children, love one another. How simple can it be? But how perfect can it be? Just love one another. And so as we think about what we've said this morning, let's recap just for a moment. Remember, as a Christian and as a church, we never get a second chance to make a first impression. Remember, like a good neighbor, Cynthia Ann's going to be there. We've got the meat. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. God will take our burdens if we just give them to him. And you don't have to be an Oscar Mayer wiener to be loved. You just have to demonstrate the love of Christ. This we can do. And this we will do. As you well know, each time we gather together, whether we're here in person or whether we're online, we're inviting people, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we invite you to accept him right here, right now. The love of Christ is what makes the difference in the world. And of course, the love of Christ is what enables us to cope with the things that happen in our lives. You know, the Wilkinsons are dealing with the, the loss of Diane's father. Uh, it's very tragic and very difficult. We've all experienced something like this. But love lifts us. The love of Christ enables us. And you know that. If there's anyone who's never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior,
who wants to do so now, we invite you to do that. We're going to turn number 107. 107. If you're able, we'd like you to stand. Love lifted me. Father God, as we've gathered here again today, we praise you and thank you. Holy Spirit, for your comfort, for your guidance and your direction, how desperately we need it in every day of our life. And Lord Jesus, the greatness of your sacrifice is paramount. We praise you and thank you that you cared enough to give your all for us that we might learn how to give our all for you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I promise.